Hello, good morning, and welcome back to Coffee and Headlines, our morning get-together live here on Facebook, where we take a look at headlines from our city, our state, and our country. We put together content that is useful for us as a community of English-speaking locals to connect with, with one another, connect with our city, our state, our country, our traditions. And of course, we look at your questions, your ideas, and your suggestions as to how we can better connect with one another to find the things we need to enjoy our city, whether it is scuba diving or it is where to pay for your taxes or what the new restaurants in town are doing, anything that comes to mind. It's always a pleasure to get together with you. And today is September 2nd, the second day of the month. Our president has delivered his State of the Union address. We're still waiting for critics and analysts to distill the information. Our governor continues to make interesting promises, some of which we're going to touch base on today. And what else do we have going on? We have all kinds of interesting things. Today's a slightly cultural edition of Coffee and Headlines because we're going to examine two, two topics that have to do, one of them with a rite of passage here in Puerto Vallarta and another one about how ah, Willy Wonka would not be in business if it wasn't for Mexico. But... We'll get to that in a second. First, a pleasure to say hello to everyone. As always, if you are new to the live broadcast, please let us know. Write the word new. And all we will do is, hold on, let me get comfortable here. There you go. All we will do is wish you a nice little welcome to Coffee and Headlines. If you're watching later on in the day, we'd love you just as much, particularly those of you who watch on YouTube where we don't have live commenting or anything. But we love the fact that you subscribe we love the fact that you click like on our videos. It helps us get more um, visibility out there. Uh, last but not least, before we get started, as usual, if you have something truly important that you wish to share with the cluster or that you're looking for an answer about, please let us know by adding a, a capital letter Q at the beginning of your comment, and we'll be so very happy to talk about it once we get to the chit chat section at the end of the broadcast. I will push the button. We start with a promise uh, we will keep our eye on and one that we hope Governor Alfaro will actually keep. Public transportation prices will not increase in the state of Jalisco in the coming two years, despite the fact that the current prices are no longer sustainable. This is good news. We're not going to have increases in the bus tickets, in the bus ticket prices uh, for the upcoming year's budget for the state of Jalisco. Um, Governor Alfaro has established a special support fund for public transportation users earmarked with 500 million pesos. So our economy will not be affected. Governor Alfaro also announced that the public transportation systems continue their transformation in not only Guadalajara, but also several medium-sized cities throughout the state, 
such as Lagos de Moreno, de Moreno, Tepatitlán, Zapotlán el Grande, and of course here in Puerto Vallarta, where we continue to be amused by whether our public transportation buses feature air conditioning as they should or not. Now, here's some knowledge that may be useful for those of you who are new to Puerto Vallarta. We are now in September, and even though it's our Independence Month and you'd think that this is a big month for tourism, it is actually considered the slowest and perhaps the most challenging month of the year in Puerto Vallarta as far as tourism is concerned. Why is this? Well, uh, if you think about it, Mexican tourism, um, or as far as Mexican tourism is concerned, many children are back in school, so it's not like families are traveling all that much. As far as international tourism, well, we have to deal with this reputation that we have, that Puerto Vallarta is unbearably hot during, or rainy, during the month of September. And of course, that is true to a certain extent, but this doesn't prevent us locals from having a good time. But of course, um, Puerto Vallarta has earned a special name for, for September and probably other places in Mexico. But here, locals call Septiembre, Septiembre, which is a wordplay between the word Septiembre, which means September, of course, and the word Hambre, which means hunger. So Septiembre becomes Septiembre, and this is the month where allegedly we um, struggle the most to make ends meet financially. But what does that mean for us as English-speaking locals? Well, it you know we're not staying at hotels, but maybe we could. See, September is the month where a lot of hotels will have special um, prices for people looking for a staycation. Uh, it is also a, a great month for, for day passes. If you want to go and find yourself pampered at a swimming pool at a local hotel, this is a great time to look for those kinds of opportunities online. Of course, my first suggestion would be to go directly to the hotels and not to websites such as day pass and things like that, because um, they don't seem to update to the promotions that each hotel has on a regular basis. Of course, it is also a challenging month for hotel workers because hotels will try to find ways to let go of employees without letting go of them. So what is traditionally done is what hotels call solidarity days. Hotels and restaurants will do this in which you have your day off, but then the business will tell you, well, in solidarity of the economy, please take another day off and we will not pay for it. So <laughs> it's one of those things that happens. But again, for most of us, it's a good deal because we can um, we can find ways to pamper ourselves when it is most important for the local hotel. So just keep that in mind. Moving right along, uh, there are two tropical systems that are raising eyebrows as they evolve into larger storms. One of them is already heading towards Baja California. And the other one is currently where Guatemala meets Mexico. So it's barely in the picture. It's going to head up. So we're going to keep track of these two weather systems in the next couple of days just to find out if they are bound to affect us. Let's take a look at the weather to see if we can figure out what's going to happen for this weekend. <music> The most expensive show in television history should have been Growing Pains reboot starring a reanimated Alan Thicke, but instead we have to settle for Lord of the Rings. Okay, so this is the first, <laughs> the first entry that we read with, um, with our snarky weather set at its maximum setting. Let me see if I can pull up the graphic, which I failed to prepare for today. Uh, ah, here it is. Let me see if I can show this to you really quickly. Yesterday, um, Luisa said, well, what would it be like if snarky weather was at the foulest as it gets? And I have a little graph here. I cannot make it big as much as I would like to, but let me show you this. Here we go. I am reading that the personality for carrot weather is now on overkill 
Carrot will make creative use of profanity in her forecasts. And of course, we have our politics set to liberal. So moving forward, we can expect more snarky, more liberal uh, comments from Carrot Weather, at least until she gets or he gets a little um, unruly. And there you go. So moving right along, I want to show you this dude. You may know this dude. Who is this man and why does he look so worried? Well, in case you don't recognize him, his name is Willy Wonka. And he's worried. He looks worried because if it wasn't for Mexico, he would be completely, totally, hopelessly out of business. Did you know that? Willy Wonka would be out of business if it wasn't for Mexico. Why is that? Well, two years ago, Congress decreed September 2nd as the national cacao and chocolate day. Why would we do that? Well, because chocolate comes from Mexico. You may or may not know that, but please know, I have pulled some factoids together for you guys. Mexican mythology states that cacao came to us by way of Quetzalcoatl, who of course is the god of winds and rain and the creator of the world and humanity. He placed cacao on earth as a source of nourishment um, and pointed it out to the Aztec as a food that was not disdained by the gods. And as such, it was considered precious and it was actually used as currency by the Aztec. You went to jail, you had to pay to get out of jail in a certain number of cacao beans and such and so forth and so on. When the Spaniards arrived, the Spaniards uh, traded goods with the Aztec, and of course the Aztec paid the Spaniards with cacao, among other things. And um, and of course the Aztec drank uh, a, a cocoa-based or cacao-based drink, but it was bitter and it was even spicy because the Aztec added chili pepper to the combo. But when cacao traveled back to Spain sometime in the decade of 1520, it became extremely popular as a beverage in Spain. And whereas the Spanish were like, well, this is really groovy. It's spicy and bitter. What happens if we add some sugar to it? And the rest is history. As soon as cacao reached Spain, as soon as the Spanish decided to sweeten it, um, cacao took over the world as chocolate. And this is how Willy Wonka stayed in business. So don't go out and eat 22 pounds of chocolate because that will actually kill you. It's a lethal dose. But go out and enjoy some cacao today. Go out and enjoy some chocolate if you can uh, to celebrate the fact that Mexico has this day. And I lost my words. Amazing. I lost my train of thought. Um, that never happens to me or doesn't happen very often. So let me now remind you of certain things that are going on this weekend. As you know, Javier Nino, the local artist, um, is um, going to be celebrated at the Arte Vallarta Museum. And this happens tomorrow, Saturday, from 6 to 8 p.m. That's just a reminder. Another reminder, we had mentioned this concert by Tomer Cohen, a jazz trio, Tomer Cohen and his trio. <clears throat> They're going to be performing at um, 8.30 at Cuates y Cuetes. This is right on the beach. There's going to be no cover for this concert. So if you enjoy good jazz, um, this is something that we can get behind. Um, this is something that we can attend. I am totally at a loss of words today. This is horrible. And of course, we announced that there's going to be... Um, uh, a free mariachi concert at the Malecon this Sunday night at 8 p.m. This is to this is part of the the big meet taking place in the state of Jalisco between mariachi and charreria. We talked about this a couple of days ago. So, if you're looking for something fun and free to do on Sunday night, 8 p.m. Mariachis featuring uh, two mariachis, the Nuevo Tecalitlan and the Asíes Tecolotlan mariachi. So these are not even local mariachis, so this is going to be something wonderful to look forward to if you are 
out and about. And now, of course, we take a quick look at um, some of your comments just to see what you guys are up to for the weekend. Feel free to fill us in with your weekend plans. Raymond says it's a fabulous Friday in Versailles. Good morning to all. Well, good morning to you, Raymond. It's always a pleasure to read you and to read the rest of you. Doug is all the way out in Cincinnati. Um, let's see what else we have. Tutti, 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 tutti. Timothy says it's hot, sunny and hot in Los Angeles. Um, it's sunny and hot down here. Alex and Steve are counting days, 45 days until we're back to our home in Puerto Vallarta. Yay. Uh, let's see. We talked about this yesterday, Bill. FMMs are eliminated when visiting Puerto Vallarta. Indeed. It's been now a month since the local airport went to electronic forms. And as we reported yesterday, if you want to watch the broadcast, I think it was yesterday, um, travel time or, you know, the process of getting through the airport has been significantly decreased, as I understand it. Do, 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 do. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Well, Raymond, that's what that special fund is. Raymond asks, no price increases for the buses, but how will they pay for the abundant AC? Well, look, here's the thing. The abundant AC was always part of the deal. As you know, if you look at, if you look at it with just basic eyes, you know, we don't have access to the details. But, you know, when, when, when the government contracted service with Unibus, Unibus said, said we're going to deliver air-conditioned buses, you know, so they just stopped using it because, because, so, I don't know. Da, 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 da. An Uber guy said they call September, September, yes, that's exactly what we were talking about just a second ago, um, but, you know, it is, it is what it is. Oh my God, yes, let's go to a hotel for a Paco trip, I tell you, you are danger, Luisa, because you have all these wonderful news and wonderful ideas. I would love to go for a staycation somewhere, or at the very least, I would love to go for a, a day pass sometime before the month is over. Let's see. More good mornings. Thank you very much. Snarky overkill. Yes, if this is related to the weather, Luisa, we made the modification just for you. Uh, 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 uh. Chris asks, do members of the cluster like milk chocolate or dark chocolate? I will answer for myself. I like them both, and it all depends on how I'm consuming it. If I'm cooking and it's something um, not sweet, but uh, oh, what is the opposite word? sweet and savory maybe if if it's a salty dish or not an if it's not dessert i like to use dark chocolate if i'm eating it for dessert i like to use milk or light chocolate uh, uh, uh um timothy says i love the class that i took at choco museo i understand that they have chocolate making classes um <clears throat> i also understand that making chocolate is a very time consuming um exercise that requires a lot of seeds actually it takes a ton of, well not 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 a specific ton it takes a lot of seeds to make a small amount of chocolate which adds to its preciousness uh -ba -ba -ba. Do, 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 do. enjoy chocolate today absolutely <laughs> don't have to twist my arm don't have to twist mine either Sage says, Saturday is my birthday. Question, what do you locals like to do in Puerto Vallarta on your birthday? Um, what a good question. I don't like to do much of anything. Um, I like to go out with friends. I like to be surrounded by, by close friends. That's what I like to do. And at this stage of the game, um, <laughs> I don't celebrate all that much. But I remember my 50th. Oh, my God, that was a crazy, crazy, crazy birthday. 
Uh, let's see what else we have. Do -do -do -do. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much, Robert. You fill such an important niche for incoming, informing the cluster daily. I look forward to your show every day. Thank you, Robert. That makes my day. I really appreciate comments like yours because, because it reminds me that there are those of you who are interested in all the richness that can be possible from living here. And I don't mean financial richness. That's a completely different adventure. But when you take the time and you have the intention to discover what makes Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco, Mexico tick, I think you are bound for a more comprehensive experience of it. So I thank you very much for your words. It goes both ways. Um, let's see what else. Oh, Angelica is coming back. Excellent. Just bought a ticket to go to Puerto Vallarta for the middle of November. Looking forward to seeing you again, dear friend. And let's see what else. Any recommendations for a day pass? What a great question, uh, Maria Elena. I, there's a couple of things that... The first thing that always comes to mind for me is the Marriott Hotel. Because the Marriott has been around forever and they have a beautiful day pass. It used to be 500 pesos, out of which they would credit you a certain amount. I think it's a little bit more expensive. But what I like about the Marriott is it's spacious. They have a brand new pool and uh, it's, it's, it's a great hotel. But there are other more basic things. I mean, it really depends on your neighborhood, your budget, what you want to do and so forth and so on. Um, the Westin Hotel, also in Marina Vallarta, has a good, a good day pass. And uh, but more importantly, the first recommendation that I will have is, if there's a hotel in your neighborhood, don't just go there. First, give them a phone call and find out if they a have a day pass and b if they have um, availability on that specific day, because sometimes it will vary. If they don't have, if they have a lot of guests. They will not allow people to day pass. Um, conversely, if they don't have a lot of guests, then it's more likely that not only will they let locals like you and I in, but there will be special discount prices. Um, another hotel, the Villa Premier, which is right on Cinco de Diciembre. I've heard that they have a really wonderful day pass. So it's a matter of checking out. Some day passes start early and end early. Others uh, start later in the day. And some day passes are for the whole day. For example, one of the big hotels here in um, in the Zona Hotelera near near Soriana, I know that you can get there first thing in the morning and enjoy a lovely breakfast because it's all inclusive. Swim, do this and that, then come back to your house and change for dinner and you can make it like a total day experience. It really is up to you. If anybody has any recent day pass experiences that you wish to share with a cluster, we would love to read them. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, thank you for that lovely reminder, Kelly. If you guys are in the marina this evening, there is an open mic poetry session starting at 6 p.m. Uh, 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 when a driver stops for us to cross, we wave a thank you. But I've seen nationals just show the back of their hand. Can you demonstrate how we should show our hands? Do we wave the back of our hands or just show it? Well, let's start by saying, Brian, nothing horrible with, will happen if you wave your hand improperly. I mean, I, I mean, if you give somebody a finger, you know, if you give somebody the middle finger, then <laughs> clearly you might offend someone. But um, I'm trying to think when I when I when I cross the street. I sometimes go like this. I sometimes go like this. Um, it, I, I don't know that there is a proper way to do it, but it is one of those things that you cannot, you cannot frack it up unless you do something like this. That would definitely be offensive. But that's a great question. The important thing is to appreciate the person that stood, that stopped for us to cross. And I always do that, and I certainly encourage everybody to always send a nice thank you. See, there you go. Send a nice thank you to a driver if they stop for you as you're crossing the street. Uh, ba -da -ba 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 -ba. 
Lots of comments on chocolate. I love it. Do -do 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 -do. Peggy says, I was so happy to find this show. Well, the show is happy to have found you, Peggy. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we have. Oh, Peggy. Yes, of course. Peggy is the cake lady. Peggy is cake in a jar lady. And I have a jar here that belongs to Peggy that has been sitting in my kitchen for some time. For those of you that don't know, Peggy makes cakes in a jar and she makes them available for us to enjoy uh, on Wednesdays at um, at Artisan Bakery, at Raymond's Bakery here in Versailles. Uh, the fun factor is high to have a little cake in a jar and to open it and then just take a spoon and just stuff your face with it. It is a good thing. It's good to see you, Peggy, and I'm glad you're enjoying the broadcast. Let's see. You can Google Day Pass Puerto Vallarta and there is a list. I'm going to try that, of course. But again, I always recommend to call the hotel directly just to be sure that you know uh, what's going on. Kevin says, thanks for the update on the mariachi. Count me in. I think I'd like to go to that, actually. But I don't know. I, I'm going to go play hooky with some friends up in the mountains this weekend. So I have no idea what state I will come back as. <laughs> uh, let's see. Brian says, okay, thanks. Glad we haven't been flipping drivers off with a wave. Nah, I find it difficult to think that you would wave your hand in a strange way. Um, but I, I love the question. It's those little details that make a big difference. Uh, let's see what else. Peggy Utter also makes amazing decorated cakes. She did a special book cake for my grand opening. Oh, that's good to know. Excellent. You know, I actually follow Peggy on Facebook, and every now and then she posts photographs of, of yummy creations. I suggest you guys do the same. And this, of course, as Patty says, hola from Calgary. This brings us to goodbye from Puerto Vallarta. This is the end of today's broadcast. It's been a pleasure, as always, to bring knowledge and information that is hopefully useful to you, that will hopefully amuse you or, or keep you smiling through the day. If you found something wonderful here, something useful, something that you can put into practice, as always, we rely on your support and uh, we rely on your coffees. We rely on the memberships that you invest in to have access to all this information. Luna and I wouldn't be able to do it without you. So we're always grateful for that. We'll be back tomorrow. We'll be back tomorrow with another Coffee and Headlines before we take off for the weekend. So between now and then, I wish you lots of chocolate, nothing else. Have a great day and I'll see you again tomorrow.